Welcome to the LSU Sports Insider, brought to you by the journalists at The Advocate, NOLA.com, and the Times, Picky You, and Perrin Keys here coming to you on a Sunday rather than a Monday. We felt we had to uh, get into the virtual studio as fast as we could uh, with Scott Rabelais, live and direct from his hotel room in Fort Worth, Texas. We are coming to you a day early because uh, we thought we uh, we thought it appropriate. Uh, whenever LSU wins a national championship, everybody wants to discuss it. And of course, we were there to dis- to cover it. And now we are here to discuss it. Uh, LSU just keeps winning. Uh, in, the sp- in the space of 13 months, you've seen LSU win a national championship in women's basketball, uh, followed shortly thereafter by LSU's seventh national championship in baseball. No championship in football season, but you did see LSU's third Heisman Trophy winner. And now you see uh, the LSU women uh, follow up their Elite Eight uh, appearance with the LSU women's gymnastics team scoring their first ever national championship in Fort Worth here in 2024. And as I said, Rab was here uh, in Fort Worth to check it all out. He was there and saw it live. As did the advocate, as did the advocate's uh, uh, photographer Michael jo- Michael Johnson, and of course we brought uh, we brought the best and brightest to you Sunday morning in print. Uh, it will be another poster page for sale, I'm sure, at the advocate.com store. And uh, with that, we will uh, we will get into it. Rab, how about that? Another little piece of history. How, t- tell us uh, tell us what all it was like and. Um, you know what you what you were thinking, and when you realized that uh, LSU had another championship in the bag. Yeah, it's 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 pretty cool to be here for these um, these moments. I, I was here for the women's final four in Dallas, of course. That's right. Uh, when they when they beat Iowa last year to win their first title, I was out at the College World Series when they won last year. I was in Italy. Uh, people may remember I wrote a, I wrote a story from CC Italy. We were there on a <laughs> a choir tour with uh, St. Joseph's Academy and Catholic High. And uh, but we watched it in the middle of the night there, so that was fun to write write that story. But I was here for, for this in Fort Worth, and like I covered gymnastics for a long time. And I remember back in college, you know, I worked in the sports information office at LSU, and I remember th- those those are the days of uh, you know just a you know very very small you know attendance uh, you know to the program, and they they built up and built up over the years and had their close calls, and now they finally break through in in, in this the the fiftieth season of the program it started in nineteen seventy five. And uh, it's uh, you know they 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 were deserving. They were the team. You know, people can will debate probably this season forever. Uh, was LSU the best team? Was Oklahoma the best team? You know, and, and of course, but you got to do it. You got to do it in the clutch, and and, and you got to perform. And LSU certainly did that. And for for that reason, they are uh, LSU is a very deserving national champion. So we uh, uh, on this on this previous podcast and Thursday's podcast, uh, Rab, you and I broke it all down. What are LSU's chances of winning the national championship? Uh, as we said, we did not have somebody in Fort Worth last year. Yes, LSU had made the Final Four, but they it, it would have taken really all you know. No offense to that team, but it would have taken all three other teams having four or five falls or something. I mean, it just it, 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 there was. At no point did we think that, that that it was really plausible that LSU was going to win the national championship, and we thought this team could. And you said you were very clear that you thought that this team was the best LSU gymnastics team uh, that there had ever been, which is quite a mouthful given all the great athletes that have come through in the past 10 or 15 years. But we also said that, uh, listen, some things might have to happen. Uh, you know, we thought, we thought it was going to be in the final. Uh, we thought that Oklahoma would make it through to the final, uh, as would LSU and, and the other contenders, the other, uh, top contenders. And that probably in the final, something, something weird was going to happen. LSU, uh, LSU, uh, Oklahoma was going to have to take a tumble somewhere or just put up right. scores that, you know, that frankly had not had that, that would be some par for a team, for an Oklahoma team that, uh, scored the all time national high in the big 12 championships, uh, just a few weeks prior. So, um, well, we had a little twist. We had a little twist of fate, which was Oklahoma didn't do that in the final. Oklahoma actually did that in the semifinal, uh, to break down this day a little bit. That was on Thursday. LSU was in session one and, uh, made it through with Cal. And then, so, uh, Rab, you were in the arena, of course, for the nightcap session two, uh, which was the which, which the more diff, it was the more difficult field I think we would say with, yes with, it was you know with with Florida yeah. and Utah which were uh, prime contenders Alabama maybe not maybe not as much but certainly those three Oklahoma Florida Utah uh, were were 
uh, worthy opponents, put it to you like that. And uh, well, I'll share, I'll share before I ask you what you were doing, because I know what you were doing. I'll share with you a, a, a short moment uh, many years ago when the Saints were in the Super Bowl down in Miami. And uh, I was there covering on behalf of the advocate. And uh, I happened to be looking down, checking a note or checking a stat. It was a stat on, I think, Jonathan Vilma. I know where this is going. <laughs> it was in the, it was in the uh, late in the game. And I looked down and then all of a sudden I heard the crowd erupt. Well, come to find out that I had missed the first three seconds of the following play. And that play was Tracy Porter stepping in front of Reggie Wayne, picking it off. And next thing I know, I look up and he made a little cutback, was on his way to the end zone and... How about that? I missed the most memorable play in Saints history. Uh, so, Rab, uh, you were there in the arena on Thursday, but you were you had a, a somewhat similar experience. Uh, take us through uh, yeah. what was going on with Oklahoma while while you were while you were dozing off. Yeah, they they were. Uh, you know, we had LSU had the, it was in the afternoon session, and then we had a press conference with LSU in California, which was the other team that advanced out of their semifinal. Uh, grab, grab a little bite to eat uh, between sessions. They had a little uh, media meal for us, and I was chatting with uh, Scott Carter, a sports writer I know who works for Florida's in-house uh, website. And uh, then I said, like, "Oh, I got to, I got to type in the uh, the scores." Uh, I didn't have time. We, you know, we did do a quick story for online, then we come back and do you know flush things out for for print, and then for online again. And that includes uh, typing up the scores, which take a few minutes. You got to go back and forth, and you know, look at the screen and and type in and look at the, look back and forth. And uh, so I'm doing that, and I'm really concentrating because I got to get these scores in to, to to the desk. And I hear cheering, you know, uh, during as the second session starts. But I, you know, I'm thinking, you know, and there's three red teams out there. <laughs> there's Oklahoma, Utah, and Alabama. So I, I see a flash of red, and I see red fans cheering. I figure, you know, Oklahoma's doing their thing. Then I finally look up, and they have a, you know, a 48-325 or whatever they had uh, on on beam. And for for those who aren't big gymnastics fans. The max score you can get is a is a fifty. Uh, you know, you, you take the top five scores out of six, you throw out the lowest score, and then you add the ask the add the rest of them up. No one ever gets a fifty, obviously, but but uh, anything over a forty nine is uh, is is good. Anything over a forty nine five is really good. Anything uh, forty eight something or below, especially at this level, in the national championship level, is is not good. And and that's what Oklahoma had. And not only. You know, it was a bad score for for anybody at this level. For Oklahoma, they were undefeated this year. They they had to count um, uh, two falls on on uh, on vault. Uh, they had three three fell all together. They threw one out. They hadn't counted a fall all year, uh, all throughout the entire season. And Perrin mentioned it the score they had the Big put, Twelve put game. This in, time, time I was going I'm sorry, yeah. Rab. I, mean, mm -hmm. I apologize for cutting you off. Just to put this into perspective, first first and foremost, Alabama is a juggernaut and has been a juggernaut, reigning national champion. Uh, they don't make mistakes. That's what they're known for. Is really, frankly, not making Oklahoma. mistakes. They're gonna yeah. do, yeah, Oklahoma. They're going to do yes, Oklahoma. They're going to do everything excellently, and they're not going to be that the way that they you know run up all these great scores is that they don't make a mistake, and and therefore they don't get deducted any points or very few points, and that's why they wind up with these high scores. This was Alabama's excuse me, Alabama. This was Oklahoma's lowest score on vault in sixteen years. 16 years. So th that tells you all you need to know. And to add a little context to that, I was talking to Dee Dee Bro, LSU's former coach, who we're going to talk about later. Um, I said 16 years ago, they were doing vaults on the pommel horse. You know, they, they were they, yeah. you know, they were taking the <laughs> you know, they, they're taking the handles off the pommel horse that the men use and and you know that now they have a vault a specially designed vault table that's kind of got this, you know, this curve to it. And she said, and of course, the degree of difficulty. So it, it's it's a very different event from from that. So that's a very long time in uh, in gymnastics. And and like I said, they they hadn't counted a fall all year. LSU's counted a couple of falls this this year and had to you know go on. And they they did lose a couple of meets during the year too, uh, early on, and then to Missouri and, and at Florida. So uh, this was stunning. I mean, the whole arena was was stunned because Oklahoma was practically out of it. Uh, from from the from the from that first event, and then they really were out of it after they had a, kind of another fall on on beam. Um, it didn't even get to 197, which is you know just the minimum score for hey you did you did good you know <laughs> you know right. but didn't make it. Rab is uh, for all of all of these all of you who are uh, tuning in and listening. Rab is is very well skilled and experienced in figuring out in live in live time. Uh, 
you know, just exactly what's going on in terms of scoring and are they going to have enough and are they still in contention? And I frankly still am not, I, I don't have that feel. Um, but, uh, you know, we saw, we saw what happened back at the desk. And so I texted Rab and I said, uh, did you see this? Is Oklahoma in trouble? <laughs> and he said, you bet you boomer sooner they're in trouble. Uh, <laughs> and sure enough, they were, but listen, that was, you know, going back to sort of the original point, that was what LSU needed. It's not to say that LSU might not have had the, the meat of their life, the score of their life in the championship had Oklahoma made it. Uh, but you got the feeling uh, that it was very much like, uh, for example, when uh, you're in the NCAA tournament and, you know, a juggernaut number one seed gets upset and you were the number two or the number three seed in your region. And now all of a sudden it looks like the door is wide open. You know, it's there. It's there suddenly, you, you know, it's there for the taking. Uh, even if you were a tight number two or number three seed, very close to the uh, to the number one seed in that tournament. Well, now you feel like the door is really, you know, the door has been opened. The, the the road is wide open for you to be able to 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 go and claim it, you know, to go break down the door and claim it for yourself. And so I think that's what everybody was uh, feeling, uh, certainly within the LSU program. And certainly if you were an LSU fan walking out of that arena or tuning off the TV that Thursday night. And that set up, of course, uh, you know, a chance for for LSU to do their thing in Saturday's meet. Um, they, of course, finished up on beam. Everybody, I think, will remember, uh, you know, who's got a stake in uh, an emotional stake in LSU gymnastics. I think everybody will remember where they were when Leah Finnegan finished off on beam and clinched it really for LSU. Uh, but, Rab, just take us through, uh, you know, the 14 field and just sort of take us through that day, the day of the championships. Yeah, so it's uh, so Oklahoma's out. It's uh, Utah and uh, Florida advancing out of the second semifinals. It's LSU, California, Utah, and Florida. Uh, California in the final for the first time. LSU in their 10th final, but still trying to win that first national championship. Been a runner-up four times. Utah and Florida, both programs had won. Only seven programs since 1982 uh, going into Saturday had won national championships. So it's kind of a very small, very small club. Uh, and so uh, LSU is trying to make history. LSU suddenly is in the, thrust into the role of the favorite uh, as compared to being the trying to be the team that's going to knock off Oklahoma with, with an upset. And let me go back quickly. Uh, Oklahoma in their regional semifinal had a uh, 198.050 in, in, the, in the semifinal so, and then a 198.4 in the regional final. Uh, so LSU's 198.225, which was their winning score yesterday. They, they would have had a shot. They they'd would have been, have they'd shot have been right there. That's they would right. have been right there with Oklahoma. because you know, you know, Scoring's a little tougher. Uh, and the pressure is obviously much higher when you get to the nationals. But anyway, it's that that's the those are the four teams, and and it was a very similar spot for LSU uh, gymnastics that it was for the women's basketball team uh, here in Dallas last year. It was that was of course uh, Iowa knocking off undefeated South Carolina in the semifinal, while LSU beat Virginia. Yeah, that's State. right. And then LSU is the favorite over Iowa, and and they and they won as the favorite. So it, it's different from being the team you, you're expecting to be having to pull the pull an upset to. We're the ones that that are expected to win now. Not that Florida and Cal and and Utah weren't good; they were all top five teams uh, from the uh, top five seeds, and so they, they were they're all very highly respected teams. But LSU uh, w was the favorite; they were the SEC meet champions and all that stuff. So um, started off, you know, a little a little um, not not bad, but the, you know, this n n nothing super great on on floor. No, floor floor was good. They they just had a forty nine six one two five, then a forty nine four on vault and a forty nine four five zero on 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 uneven bars, and that put them just a fraction behind Utah going into the final rotation. And LSU's finishing on beam, and Utah's finishing on vault. Well, beam is uh, you know is, is is the most unpredictable event. It, it, it's it, the most things can go wrong. It, it, it's it's you're four feet off the ground on a four inch wide beam and. Uh, and it's you got to you got to hit all the all the routines and you got to you got to stick the dismount. It's it's very difficult. But but LSU really I, nailed it. Can I can I pause you right there, mm -hmm. Rab? Because um, I, listen, Connor McLean's as good as there is on beam, and certainly they had the athletes to do it. But uh, sort of interesting and maybe kind of sort of fitting that LSU. It's worth noting that LSU started off this season with a couple of sub forty nine scores on beam. They really struggled out of the gate, and now to have it come down to beam, which is already the most difficult, and uh, for them to show out as they did on, on beam, I thought that was something else. It was it was a sight to behold. 
It was, and, and, you, and you're right. There were some um, there were little grumblings about about Beam um, earlier this year. Yeah, for, 40, the first two meets of the year at home against Ohio State, and then the four-team meet in Utah against Oklahoma and Utah and UCLA. They had a 48-7 on Beam and then a 48-7-50. Uh, on beam, and so people are like, going, "What's wrong with their beam? What's you know, what's 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 happening there?" And then later against Alabama, they had a forty-eight four five zero on on beam, even though they had a really good team score overall in that meet. So uh, they had the times, but they really they really started to to take it up a notch on beam um, uh, in in the postseason. And then um, the, this was uh, this was the best performance ever. Uh, you know, this was a forty-nine seven six. Two five on beam, which is the best score on beam by anyone in the NCAA final ever. Broke the record uh, that UCLA set six years ago, a forty nine seven fifty. So uh, really, really tremendous score, and they knocked it out of the park. And and uh, so LSU's on beam, and Utah's on on vault, and uh, vault goes quicker than beam. So you you know mm-hmm. you're going to know what else you needs to do by the time they get to the end, because the, because vault is, is just, you run and you flip and you land, <laughs> you know, beam, you're doing a routine and, and you're doing, you know, it's just a longer process. And so you got to know what to do. So Utah's first two, first two, uh, uh, vault athletes, uh, don't, don't, uh, don't do a good job. They, they don't, they don't hit the mark. Uh, they, let me look up their scores real quick. Their first two vaulters got like a, a nine, two, eight, seven, five and a nine, six, seven, five. So they have to count the nine, six, seven, five, which is not a good score. You know, Sierra Ballard career high, um, nine, nine, five to lead off LSU on beam. I was what reminded a, of what a time I was reminded yeah. of Johnny Miller's call in the U S open. Of course, I'm reminded of a golf thing when Corey Pavin hit the great shot onto the green in the U S open. And he said, it's the shot of his life. And it was the shot of her life. You know, it was, yeah. the, it was the routine of her life. It was like Jasmine Carson last year in the, in the, in the national championship game, hitting all those three pointers. Really settled LSU down. But then the next gymnast, Savannah Shane, her, a sixth-year gymnast, had transferred this year from Florida for her one year at LSU. And, uh, I mean, the last routine of her of her life. And she just steps funny as she, something that yeah. never happens to her. And she's hanging onto the beam. If people didn't see it. If you go back and watch the replay, she's refusing to fall, but it's a major deduction, right? So she gets a 9-3, 9-3-8-7-5. Uh, double, double check. Yeah, nine three eight seven five. So LSU's got to throw that out. They can't have another fall, right? And then they just nail it from from then on. Connor McLean gets a nine nine six two five, the best score of the day in, by anyone in any event. There weren't any tens yesterday. Just Connor McLean on beam. That's not a surprise because she's so good on beam. But nonetheless, again, you got to do it. You got to do it. Yeah, as as Jay Clark said, Connor's beam uh, routine is world renowned. As he put it, you know, she's uh, done a lot of international competition. Then the last three gymnasts, Kai Johnson, Haley Bryan, and Leah Finnegan, not all nine nine fives. They just they just knocked it out of the park. But as it turns out, you and I talked before the uh, before we we started our recording. Um, when they got to Aaliyah Finnegan, she just needed to stay up. They just needed to erase uh, Shane Hur's score. If she gets a nine six or better, LSU wins. Uh, still wins the meet. But it's a um, so that's that's like a major ba- uh, that's staying on the beam, but you had a major uh, balance check. You know, you you know, you almost fell off, but you catch yourself, which happens a lot on on, on beam. So uh, she didn't have to do anything as great as she did, but when she nailed it, she knew, and they knew. And she bur- it was such absolutely a, a moment I'll, I'll never forget. She just burst into tears immediately and and hugged Ashley Nat, the, the LSU grade, who's an assistant coach and their beam coach. And uh, yeah, they they knew it. They they knew it right in the minute that they'd done it. And ended up winning by about four tenths, which is you know like my my brother texted me, how big a win is that? So in football terms, it's like winning like forty one twenty seven, probably. <laughs> so so right. it ended up being a good win, but it was something that was in doubt until until the very last minute. She had to do it, but she did it and then some. And uh, it was a very uh, it ended up being uh, a, a, a very uh, uh, fitting in for LSU on beam, and it was, and, and Finnegan had her ups and downs on beam, like the team did on, on beam this year, but they kept her in that uh, anchor spot, and uh, and she, and she she just nailed it. She's got like a like a, a triple combination, and when she hit that, you knew they they just they had one hand on the trophy, and then when she landed, it was all over. That's uh, the the entire the beam rotation, uh, the the one you know flood not notwithstanding, Sierra Ballard. You know, knocked it out of the park, as you would expect. Connor McLean knocked it out of the park. Uh, Aaliyah Finnegan, you know, 
you didn't, you didn't, maybe not everybody knew, and I certainly didn't know for sure exactly what they needed, but we knew that it needed to be at the, at the very least good. It needed to not yeah. be a disaster, if not very good. Uh, it, it all likened, I all, I likened it all to all of these athletes. This was the equivalent to, you know, whether you want the ball in your hand, you know, with, you know, with the final shot, whether you want the ball in, in your hand with, uh, you know, two minutes to go in the fourth quarter down, you know, either going to take it and, and do it and, and, and be a clutch performer, a clutch athlete or not. And, and boy, did they, you know, didn't, yeah. didn't they do it? Look, was, look was, yeah, Haley Bryant was so good. You know, she won the all around title. She had tens on all four events this year, which is, is uh, the season slam. And which is, you know, only a few gymnasts have ever done that. And so there was, there was a lot of speculation of why they didn't make her the anchor instead of Finnegan, especially when Finnegan had some of her ups and downs on beam, but Finnegan, but she said, She's had and is having a, a a great year as it turns out. She had, she she uh, won the NCAA floor title on Thursday night. That's when the in, individual titles are decided, and she anchors them in this this ultimate moment for the program. And she's going on to the Olympics to represent the Philippines this summer in Paris. Uh, her mom is is from the Philippines, so she's she's able to represent them. And uh, so her year is turning out uh, turning out pretty great. When at times it's like. What's wrong with Aaliyah Finnegan? You know, you know, why because she can do tremendous gymnastics. She's tremendously talented, uh, just kind of outshined at times by by Haley Bryant and and and, and Connor McLean as, as well. But uh boy, when when they counted Thursday night and again sat, uh Saturday, she really came through for LSU. And uh now, you know, the sky's the limit for her going into you know the Olympics and then her senior season next year for LSU. So uh, the celebration begins, uh, and I think it was only appropriate. This certainly, this clip has made the rounds on social media, as you would expect for it to. Uh, but the celebration begins. Uh, confetti falls. They get their trophy. They get their Advocate Championship posters, uh, which they proudly hold up. Uh, but before the celebration begins, Jay Clark, who is now, of course, in charge by himself uh, of the LSU gymnastics program, he made it a point to we're not going to get this party started before Dee Dee. Dee Dee Bro gets up on the podium with us. Uh, Dee Dee Bro, uh, the pride of Donaldson, Louisiana, started the program, uh, did a lot with a, with a little for years and years and years and years. And now, of course, the LSU gymnastics program, it already was a juggernaut, it was just missing the national championship. It's the only thing that was really missing. From the program because now of course as we know that the, the athletes are international superstars and uh you know world world renowned and they have one of the best facilities one of the gymnastics one of the best gymnastics facilities in all the Pro world probably the, the best the, probably yeah. The best. And, yeah and so uh and so but it all, none of this could have been done without Didi, who uh who fought her way through and almost literally fought her way through uh some very very lean years at lsu uh, Rab, I was just hoping that you could reflect. Uh, you could reflect on somebody who you know very well, Dee Dee Bro. Yeah, I, I was uh, Jay Clark uh, in the post game press conference as well. Post meet press conference, he 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 gave a lot of credit to Dee Dee for bringing him on. Um, Jay Jay was a longtime assistant at Georgia when they were really on top of the gymnastics world. He became the head coach when Su Suzanne Yachlin retired. He was fired there uh, because yes. uh, kind of kind of like Smoke Laval following Skip Bertman at LSU in, in baseball did okay, but didn't do great, and so it, so he was fired. And they've still been searching to to get that back at Georgia. Just fired their coach again, um, but uh, she she brought Jay in. And he said she brought me in not not as a subordinate, but as as a partner, and to trying to elevate the program. They'd been good at, at LSU gymnastics, been very good at times, but not great. And then they started. Going, going to the, the what was then the Super Six, and now it's the now it's the four, the Final Four, the Four on the Floor, whatever they call it. And this is LSU's tenth appearance in that. They they they'd never broken through, uh, and so they started breaking through, and then they won some SEC championships and were, were runner up four times uh, between 2014 and 2019 in in, in the final. And, uh, and she, so she retired uh, in in uh, after the 2020 season. And this was uh, this, uh, she and Jay were co-head coaches, and he became the coach. But to go back to what you said about Didi, Dee Didi Dee is one of those people, like like Kim Mulkey, like Sue Gunter in women's basketball, uh, a pioneer of the sport. She was in the sport before it was a sport, you know. And I mean, by, really, by that, really one of those, really one of those great Title IX pioneers. She yeah, really was. So by, by by that I mean she was coaching before NCAA. The NCAA, um, the NCAA is only 
uh, sanctioned women's athletics since 1982. That's kind of hard to believe looking back there. So before that, it was the AIAW. And that, that was that was a whole separate organization for women's sports. And um, yeah, and that's why some of the records like Lynette Woodard's uh, scoring record at Kansas that, uh, you know, uh, Caitlin Clark passed her on the way to you know, the scoring record. That's not even that's not an NCAA record. Her, 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 right. her points, her scoring is not even recognized by the NCAA. Uh, Kim Mulkey at La Tech won the f- last AIAW national title in 1981 and the first NCAA title in 1982. And so the AIAW title doesn't count to the NCAA. So there's a lot of examples of that. And D.D. Bro was the coach going back to the late 70s when it, when it, when it was that. And, and it, they, they competed in the PMAC. At times they competed in the field house because they drew such, such, such uh, little fans. And, and uh, the program, uh, you know, struggled to survive. You know, uh, she tells this story of, of, uh, of, uh, they, they just put all the gymnastic equipment in a corner of the field house and the athletic director at the time, I think it was Paul Dietzel called her and the men's gymnastics coach Armando Vega over to his office and said, you guys fight it out and see who's going to come out on top. And, he, and she said, he looks at Armando Vega and goes, my money's on her. <laughs> and so, the men, <laughs> and so I've the never men, heard that story. Yeah. Oh, and, and, uh, it was like, yeah, that was a good bet by Paul Dietzel. And then uh, the men's program does get cut eventually along with wrestling uh, under Bob Broadhead in the early eighties. And she said one day she got a call from Broadhead. She was called over to the athletic director's office. Their offices at the time were in the PMAC. A lot of the, a lot of the, the uh, Olympic coaches' uh, offices were in the PMAC. And she said, he's got to tell me he's going to cut the program. I'm not going over there. I'm not going to talk to him. <laughs> and so she didn't go. And I don't know if that made a difference or not. But, but um, the program would not exist, would possibly not exist at all. And certainly would not exist in the form that it does without the, the foundation that the D.D. Bro laid uh, you know, building it up slowly over time and uh, bringing in somebody like Jay Clark and building the gymnastics practice facility, which if you've never seen, if you're next time you go to a sporting event at LSU, just go peek in the window. You're, you're looking at the best facility in it's the palace. world. Yeah, it's, it's, palace. it's a palace. I, I saw, I saw a, um, a quick aside. I saw a, a documentary on Simone Biles one time and she was training at the U S uh, Olympic facility in Colorado Springs. And uh, I'm like, it looks nice. It's not LSU facility. It really isn't. And I'm talking about the U.S. Women's Olympic team, which is the gold standard, you know, right? right. And, and it's not, not quite as good. She did that. She raised the money for it. She, she fought to get it done. And, and uh, one of those fighters and, and, and uh, you, know, you know, people talk about standing on the shoulders of giants to, to achieve great things. That, that's where the LSU Women's Gymnastics Program stands today. And I'm so glad that she was able to be there and to see it. And uh, she, she, I, t- I, ran, I saw her before the meet. And she said, I didn't sleep last night. It was just, it was just like normal. She, I, I couldn't sleep. And she was all keyed up and excited. And um, it, it's her victory, too. And I, I'm, I'm sure she'll get a um, – I'm sure they'll, they'll give her a championship ring and everything. And, and, and well-deserved. Well if, she, if, she if she doesn't get a ring, nobody else should, frankly. That's right. Almost including the athletes themselves. Yeah. Uh, I say that exaggerating a little bit, but not a lot. Um, the, that facility, not for nothing, but uh, – and I know you know this, Rab. It built a spot an empty spot uh, where one day a, an NCAA championship trophy was supposed to go. And that spot of course had been empty uh, and it's shelf. not going to yeah. be anymore. Nope. So uh, matter of fact, it'll probably be there uh, as we're speaking to you uh, late Monday, excuse me, late Sunday morning. Uh, it'll probably be there within a couple of hours as LSU is set for a champion a championship rally of sorts at 12 30 PM Sunday uh, over there on campus. So, uh, well, long story short, uh, they, they did it. They did it. It was a long journey. They got it done. Uh, I think we would all agree that probably Haley Bryant, you mentioned her, her gym slam, her season slam. So very few athletes, uh, gymnasts have done that before on the college level. Uh, and she has to go down parent, uh, if I may, she, you know, with the national championship, with the winning the NCAA all around title, the SEC all around title, the AI award, she might win the Honda award. You really have to say now she she's LSU's best gymnast ever, and there's she, been a lot of she, great, but you can you can debate best. talent, but you cannot debate that she is by far by far the most accomplished LSU gymnast uh, yes. who has ever come through there for sure. But certainly, probably you know just the best outright. And uh, you and I were talking before, and this is this is a topic that we've discussed you know more than one occasion here in the last two or three years. But Rabbi, you know why don't we just take a moment here and reflect on a couple of things. And the first thing that I want to reflect on is the number of athletes uh, that have come through LSU. And, you know, for those of you who are maybe, I don't know, 35 and younger, 
you say, well, what's the big deal? LSU's got, you know, world-class athletes coming through that campus all day long. And yes, they do. But it, this was not always the case. I, I just, I'm just going to read off. This is not probably a full list. It's kind of a partial list of some of the some of the better athletes that have come through LSU in the past five years. Haley Bryant, as we've discussed. Ingrid Lindblad, the women's golfer who is the number one amateur in the world. Joe Burrow won the Heisman. It was the first Heisman of 40, 40, 40 years. How many? 40, 40 years. years. Yeah, that's right. 40 years. First Heisman winner in 40 years. To say nothing of all the other, you know, elite level NFL players who were on that 2019 championship team. Paul Skeens, number one overall pick. Dylan Cruz, Golden Spikes winner. Jaden Daniels, another Heisman Trophy winner. Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors. A couple of first, they're about to, you know, here in less than a week, there'll be a couple of first round receivers who will join two other previous first round receivers, Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. Shakiri Richardson, who may, you know, she's the world champion, the reigning world champion in the win, women's 100 meters. She's going to go for gold, obviously in Paris this summer. Uh, and she says she's going to try to uh, run for gold in the 200, whether she does that or not, we'll see. But nonetheless, you're talking about what's clearly one of the world's greatest athletes one of the world's greatest uh, uh, track athletes uh, at the moment, Sean Burrell, who won the national championship at the 200 hurdles, Aliyah Hobbs, who's another elite level sprinter, who's uh, certainly going to be more likely to be in Paris than not likely be in Paris for the women's track team. Kristen Noth and Taryn Cloth, who are the two beach volleyball players who are right now ranked, Rab, aren't they the number one beach volleyball players uh, in the world? Last time I checked, they were number two in the world, but they they have already okay. uh, they've already uh, accumulated enough points to qualify for the Olympics to represent. They'll the be in, they'll be in Paris at the sand volleyball courts right underneath the Eiffel Tower. Angel Reese, international celebrity to go with All American status and national championship status, now a top ten pick in the WNBA draft. draft. Flaw J Johnson, who we, uh, Rab, I'm not going to speak for you, but I'll speak for myself. When the time comes, I'm going to guess that she's going to wind up being a top 10 pick because she's only getting better and better. Maggie McNeil, who is a 200-meter a swimmer uh, uh, for the women's swimming team, who uh, won the, the Canadian butter, 100, who was, won the 100 butterfly uh, in Tokyo. Yeah, excuse me, 100, 100 butterfly. I'm sorry. You're going to try to become uh, the first woman to win those in back-to-back -back Olympics. I should have known that because that's actually my wife's. That was my wife's event. Uh, but uh, great Canadian. <laughs> Great Canadian hunter butterfly reigning gold medal winner, and she will try to be the only uh, athlete in Olympic history to uh, repeat as a uh, gold medalist in the 100 fly. This is that, that's just oh, a, wait, wait. You leave one a, out. This is a you small sampling. Yeah, go ahead. You leave one out. Uh, Monica broke his broke his. Oh world yeah. Record. Oh, that guy broke his world record during the meet yesterday. <laughs> that's or right. Or right out right before it, he broke his own world record yeah. in in the. In, I think he was competing in China. On the on the Diamond League, uh, so uh, he Mondo's in his Mondo's in his early twenties, and he's going to go. To, he's already the greatest pole vaulter of all time. That, that these yeah. are, I mean, this does not happen. This does not happen on a campus very often. This does not to, to have these this many yeah. athletes uh, from in so yeah. many different sports who are not just all Americans, but they're elite on the world level. If it really, it really is. Stop and think about that. It's amazing. It really is. It, it truly is amazing, and we've it, it's it's become so. There've been so many of them. We're kind of taking them for granted. But compare yeah. LSU, compare LSU to Iowa and Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark, we could say she's as big as anybody right now in the world of sports. Right? You know, set the the, the scoring record. They made it all the way to the final. She's the number one draft pick. Uh, you know, all all this stuff. Name me another great athlete at Iowa. Right now, or the last punter? years, the punter. <laughs> I can't. I got gotcha. you. The punter? The, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the punter. The, the all-American punter. Okay, you did got me. I don't know if they had an all-American punter, but I mean, we know that they can punt the hell out of the ball. Oh, that's, that's all they do. That's right. Um, <laughs> but she's she's way at the top. But there's no one else to share that spotlight with her. But at LSU, you're like, like I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm saying, I'm reminding everyone. Include Haley Bryant, and when you're taking about when you're taking off Joe Burrow and and Jaden Daniels and Angel Reese and Mondo Mondo Dupont, Shakari Richardson, and all these people, throw Haley Bryant in there. Uh, you know, it's it gets to be a crowded table. You know, if you, if you brought yes. these people put brought these people together for dinner, uh, they'd have to get the little room in the back. You know, they yes. <laughs> they're not gonna go sit at the bar. You know, so it's it's uh, it, it's really remarkable, and it's uh, look, I, I I I you know. 
I'll, I'll say I went I went to LSU. Uh, I, I don't I'm not allowed to be a fan. I don't own a stitch of clothing that says LSU on it. But I am impressed by these athletes. You know these people. You know when we see them compete, Baron, we see the tip of the iceberg. The 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 hundreds and thousands of hours they put in. Uh, you know behind the scenes to to prepare and to train. And the, these these all the routines you saw the gymnastics team do yesterday. They've been doing the same thing all season. They they start in the fall and they set their routines. They 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 find the music to go with floor or or beam uh, competitions. Um, and, and they they perform the same thing over and over again. That's why they said we're not changing anything for the final. We're not doing anything extra right. because you, you you can't change at this point. It, it's all ingrained because you, I've seen it many times. The music will go out and they'll keep going on floor or yeah. beam. You know. Yeah. And so it's 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 uh, it's that ingrained, and and we only see the tip of the iceberg. And and, and these these young people have, uh, they give up a lot. You know, a lot of them are, especially in gymnastics, a lot of them are homeschooled. A lot of them, you know, yeah. don't even have the normal school experience of going to prom and going to dances and things like that. They, they give it up for their sport. Or, or the swimmers, uh, you know, they they like Maggie McNeil are going to swim at six o'clock in the morning. And they go to school and they come back and swim in the afternoon, you know. Uh, it's, and by the uh, way, probably haven't had a hamburger in three years. You know? <laughs> That's right. And, and I'm and almost not joking. You yeah. Know? And we and we left out Olivia Dunn, who who is a great gymnast. She was an all she's a, a past all American in LSU, uh, and certainly has a lot of notoriety. Uh, in fact, I saw one thing online that said Olivia Dunn and LSU won the national championship. She did not compete yesterday, <laughs> but she's part of the team and she has competed this yeah. year and uh, has a chance and can come back next year if she wants to. But and, uh, not for yeah, nothing, but Livy. In a way, I'm sorry. Not for nothing, but Livy. Uh, Paul Skeens. I hope this doesn't cross a line. But Paul Skeens uh, does not have to give Livy a ring, and Livy does not have to give Paul Skeens a ring. LSU's first couple. They went out and earned their own rings, which is that's the definition of a power couple, right there. I'd say that's something, uh, that's something that uh, Taylor and Travis can't say, right? That, that's they right. Have a that's championship right. ring. Yeah. Taylor's going to be okay, though, I think. Yeah. She'll, I'll, she'll I'll make, make that bet. Through. So, listen, this was the LSU's 52nd national championship, all sports. Um, and this was something else that I wanted to, you know, and I talked about this. This is something I, else that I thought was reflect, worth reflecting on. Uh, uh, speaking of things that, you know, you can sort of get used to or spoiled by uh, if you're a, you know, a student at LSU right now or if you're a young person uh, at LSU or has got some sort of connection to LSU. Uh it's hard to tell people this now, but we had to go back and do the math ourselves. We had to go back and do the math our, and our, uh, the homework ourselves. LSU won the national championship in football in 1958. LSU did not win another national championship until women's indoor track uh, won in 1987. So you're talking about almost 30 years, an almost a 30 year gap for a national championship of any kind in any sport in that campus. And now you know, they've got programs all over the place who are falling out of bed when winning national championships. Again, this is their third major national championship in the past 13 months to go along with women's basketball and with baseball. So, uh, you know, it's if if you are from Louisiana and you have any sort of tie to the LSU, uh, the university, the community, the athletic programs, this is about, uh, you know, you have to say it's about as good as it gets. Yeah, it, it does. And I, and I mentioned Bob Broadhead earlier, and I think this commitment to having an all-around excellent athletic program started with him in the in the early 1980s. He said, Interesting. He, yeah. he said, let's be good. You know, they brought him in. He was working for the Miami Dolphins, and uh, and they brought him in to be the athletic director to replace Paul Dietzel. Uh, and uh, and he said, let's let's be good at everything. Now, he got a couple of programs, like like wrestling and men's gymnastics, but but they, they he made was it, a slightly uh, controversial figure to begin slightly with. Con- so. Slightly controversial, but but it, you know, like like the like the line in the, one of the Star Trek movies: only Nixon could go to China, and only Bob Broadhead could could have the vision to to say, "Let's not just be good in football. Let's be good in men's basketball and women's basketball and track and field and swimming and you know all, uh, all these sports." And uh, you know, the, in the last few years, obviously, a nat- you know, national championship in football. They won in men's in the last ten years. They won in men's golf. They've won a couple of track titles. I think I think the women's track team is number one right now. Um, beach volleyball has has uh, you know been a national contender. Softball has been a national contender, uh, in a top ten team right now. And, and now you know just like you said, three national titles in 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 three different sports in the last thirteen months. Something that not many programs can say. And and this is all from a school in a state. And I can say this because I'm from Louisiana, where we rank last or near last in a lot of things. Just imagine if we were 
half as good as a state as LSU has been in athletics in, in the last few years. We'd be doing we'd be doing pretty great. But I, had, um, I actually, yeah, if I can get semi semi serious for a moment, I did have that thought. I've had that thought several times over the past, really, the last I don't know, 16, 18 months. Just you know, it makes you. Why don't we think we can be as good at everything else as we are at this? We certainly believe we've got the people and the uh, the will and the want to, to to be as good as anybody in the nation, anybody in the world at certain things. And uh, one day, Rab, maybe hopefully before you and I are dead, uh, we can see that Louisiana sort of, uh, you know, make good on all that potential in other areas, too. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, we're we're great at we're great at food and we're great at festivals and, and things like that. But but we we can be a lot better. And 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 look, um, and and it's not not just not just LSU. I mean, you know, you can point to you know, UL's had a great softball tradition over the years, and there's been other programs in the state. Yeah, obviously Certainly. Louisiana Tech in their day in women's basketball was uh, was the uh, the gold standard and everything. And, you know, it's it there are shining examples out there if people want to follow. And and is sports as important as as uh, you know, dealing with illiteracy or childhood obesity or environmental issues, no. But but there are examples of what we can do as a state, what people in the state can do if they they put their minds to it. And uh, and it, and at LSU, they they built something that is you know one of the best things in Louisiana. And uh, you have to give them all credit and give Scott Woodward, the latest athletic director, the credit. Yeah, you know, he he went out there and hired Brian Kelly, and he went out there and hired Kim Mulkey, he went out there and hired Jay Johnson. I know baseball struggling at the moment, but I think he's a very good coach. Uh, Matt McMahon, uh, you know, you got to give him some time. And he, uh, he, he's the one who said, uh, he picked, uh, Jay Clark to say, okay, you know, lead, lead this gymnastics program. And, uh, and you can see the, uh, the results of it today. And, and, uh, if I may look ahead to next year for a little bit, for, uh, people are always wondering what's please, next. Please do. Gymnastics. Yep. Um, don't know what her plans are. Haley Bryant can come back. I've, I, I hear conflicting reports about this now. Now maybe winning a national championship makes it a thing. I'm going out on top, but she can't yeah. come back next year. Uh, Olivia Dunn can come back. Alana Shonikova, who was out as, with an injury all year long, who's been an all-arounder in the past, uh, she's expected to come back for for uh, uh, for 2025. Connor McLean, uh, uh, Aaliyah Finnegan will definitely be back next year. Amari Drayton, the freshman, and they're bringing in another really great freshman class. Uh, two 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 names that you that you will know are uh, are uh, Zoe Miller and Kalia Lincoln, uh, who are. Uh, have a shot to go to the Olympic, uh, the Olympic trials, uh, for gymnastics, uh, in, in June. Uh, and, uh, Connor McLean's got a shot to go there as well, but, uh, they, they've got another, and those are just a couple of headliners on another great recruiting class for LSU. Uh, <laughs> I was reminded of this last night. Jay Clark told me privately if I'm going to share it cause they won now. He said, he told me in the off season, if I don't win a national channel in the next few years, they should run me off. You know, <laughs> he, he did. And, and well, um, he's not going to get run off. Sounds no, like no. That's right. Uh, you know, because yeah, not just this year, but actually, you know, kind of betting on the comp. This year looked like a really good team, and it turned out to be yeah. their best, obviously. But next year's team, especially if you can get Haley Bryant to come back for one more year, has the potential to be e even better. And uh, yeah. that's uh, that's pretty uh, remarkable to to say. But the the, the future is in good hands in terms of in terms of talent for LSU gymnastics. Future is in very good hands. It's pretty impressive. Uh, we we uh, we suspected that this may be coming, but we we obviously weren't sure. No, Nobody is going to be sure that something like this is going to happen until it happens. And LSU had to go out and do it. And LSU, by golly, they did it. Uh, Rabbit, is there anything as we sort of close out? Is there anything else that uh, you think we uh, that we'd be remiss in not touching, uh, other than just uh, qu quite a Quite an interesting weekend, and really quite ha has been quite an interesting month, uh, starting with uh, the LSU women in the Elite Eight. Uh, it's you know another wild year at LSU, and it's been a, another mostly very very successful year uh, on the LSU campus. What with uh, ba baseball and softball yet to come, we'll see what we'll see how they uh, get to finish it out. But, yeah, uh, any, any other thoughts? Crack and field, uh, you know, beach volleyball. As yeah. you mentioned, yeah, they're they're uh, you know, they got a, there's a few seasons left to go, but. Obviously, this one is seems like uh, you know is is something that's going to reach the climax when you have a, a, April, you know, late March, early and into April is the, this climactic month for for basketball and now gymnastics and and um, I don't know. I, I would just I would just say you know um, you know women's athletics in general has come such a long way at LSU and nationally, of course. But but uh, when you sit back and uh, again sit back and think about it, how how much of LSU's notoriety and success is due to it's, it's female athletes. 
it's it's pretty remarkable. They've come a long way from from having all their equipment tossed in a corner of the field house and having to perform in the field house or with a curtain drawn on one side of the of the arena because they couldn't draw enough fans or, or having to give away uh, basketball tickets in front of the Win Dixie or something like that. Um, uh, it, it's uh, you know, the, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a pretty golden age for LSU athletics. And I know a lot of people, it's, it's all football and, 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 uh, and, that, and obviously that's the, that's what drives the train and we'll see what they can do this year in football in, in a, in a season where the college football playoffs is expanding to 12. And that's going to be the new standard of, did you have a good season or did you not? And we'll be talking plenty about that as it comes up. But, uh, uh, you know, if, if you're an LSU fan, you, you you can't feel anything but but proud and and should and and these young ladies deserve their respect because they are they are some tough athletes. They perform, as we discussed, yes, yeah, yeah. Under uh, with there something something's hurting everybody by this time. By the time you get to this point in the season, if you get this far, and uh, and and they they uh, but they're feeling pretty good right now. And uh, I'm 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 I can't be a fan, but I'm happy for them. Because they've they uh, they're a good group and and they, and they deserve everyone's respect and admiration and uh, for a job well done. The uh, the party the celebration party will be at twelve thirty p.m. Sunday as we're recording this midday or excuse me mid morning uh, on Sunday. Uh, typically, of course, we are here on Mondays and Thursdays on the LSU Sports Insider. Uh, but again, as we said, uh, we we just uh, we we didn't think we could wait on this one. Uh, everybody wanted to uh, sort of hear and relive. Uh, the gymnastics team national championship, and that's certainly understandable. Uh, but we are typically here on Monday and Thursday on the LSU Sports Insider. Uh, you can uh, you can find us on all our social channels, uh, but specifically the YouTube channel LSU Tigers on NOLA.com. If you search for LSU Tigers on NOLA.com on YouTube, you should be able to find that channel, subscribe, and that way you'll never miss an episode. Even if we go live on Sunday and throw you a curveball, you should be able to find it. And if you don't find it uh, live, you can always find it after the fact. Uh, We are also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever other finer podcasts are found. Uh, So please check us out there. Search for LSU Sports Insider on Apple or Spotify. uh, And give us a five-star review if you like, because that will help us find uh, more LSU fans and help more LSU fans find us. Uh, And, of course, listen, listen, support your local journalist. Rab is in, uh, in Fort Worth for a reason. It's because LSU, excuse me, The Advocate has always been the number one destination for uh, all LSU sports coverage and uh, certainly if you're tuning in, if you're listening and tuning in, you know that already. So please subscribe, support your local journalists. Uh, we cover LSU by night like no other. Go to theadvocate.com slash subscribe. Uh, and if you uh, are subscribed to our LSU newsletter, you would have gotten the flash in your inbox uh, yesterday afternoon uh, that we sent out at about five o'clock. If you're running around on a Saturday and you uh, weren't in front of a, t- a TV and you weren't uh, you weren't able to pay attention to Gymnastics Live, you would have gotten a notification on your phone via email uh, through our newsletter that LSU was a national champion yet again. So please subscribe to the LSU newsletter. To do that, you go to theadvocate.com slash LSU newsletter. Uh, Rab, it's been a pleasure. You are road weary, uh, I'm certain, and uh, with the Zurich Classic yet to go this week, but uh, that's a little bit of an easier haul back and forth from Baton Rouge to Avondale. So I'm sure you'll be happy to get on, get on the road, uh, get off the road, excuse me, and get a good night's sleep. Getting on the road uh, first, then, yeah, then getting off, yeah. Yes, and uh, so I'll be waiting patiently on the two taco combo from Taco Cabana, <laughs> torn chicken, salsa verde, and uh, if you could bring home those nachos and figure out a way to keep them fresh, that'd be fantastic. So uh, for Scott Rabelais, this has been uh, my, <laughs> excuse me, for Scott Rabelais, I'm Perrin Keys. This has been the LSU Sports Insider.